Good morning guys, Unfrequented World, back at the fairgrounds, our usual starting spot. So uh, John and I are going to swing here for an hour. Got a couple nice coins out of here yesterday, so we're going to start here. And then I've found a couple uh, spots that I want to go check for a bottle dump. Uh, well, a couple bottle dumps in the bush. So that's the plan for today. We've also got a surprise visitor for today's show. You guys are not going to guess who's joining us. It's the Bounty Hunter Land Ranger Pro! Woo! Coming out of retirement. This is not a bad machine, guys. I've had a few guys uh, knocking the machine on the channel saying, Oh, you're not using it anymore. I'm just not using it anymore because I have new machines. So, hey, when you get something new, you tend to use it, right? Nothing wrong with this machine, and I'm going to show you guys that today by knocking out some great old coins. The Bounty Hunter Land Ranger Pro is a mid-level machine at a great price. Um, it'll do everything that my AT will do, except it's not waterproof. So it, it'll go down actually deeper than the AT, about 14 inches on a coin-sized item, where the AT Pro, 10 inches is the most you're going to get. So absolutely not a bad machine at all, guys. It's a value machine. The only thing that bugs me about mine is the pinpointer, and that was a known issue. I could send it back and have it fixed. I'm just too lazy to do that. So I'm going to live with poor pinpointing today. John's patenting the left-handed swing today because guess who else has carpal tunnel and uh, tendonitis? <laughs> I'm not the only old guy out here. <laughs> oh, brutal. I tried left-handed last week. It doesn't work, buddy. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was referring to metal detecting. <laughs> First hole of the day for John, just to start, uh, 1962. So he's on the board with a coin and a kind of old one. Not a bad start. I also wanted to mention, I showed you guys in another video, these little flat uh, adapters that just snap right onto the shaft of your uh, detector. My buddy Cam is making these now and selling them. I think he's selling them for about eight bucks online. I'm gonna put a link in the description of the video to that for you guys. I just swapped over from my AT Pro to this machine in a matter of, you know, a minute. I stuck the transceiver on here and now I have wireless on this machine. So a fantastic little piece that we couldn't find anywhere else. We saw a need for it. So I told him, hey, can you make me one? And, and uh, it works fantastic. So anyway, there'll be a link in the description, guys. Um, it's been a while since I used this. It is not as bad as I remembered for noise. Um, I've got it set on sensitivity 7 out of 10 right now. And I've just scrimmed up to 30 because I'm in a nail bed and it's actually really quiet. I'm only hearing something when there's an item underneath. It's not like the Cruiser which has constant background chitter, which is kind of how I remembered this machine being. This machine is very sensitive to electromagnetic interference. If you're anywhere near wires, you will hear it go off and it will go crazy. I remember having that issue with it a lot, but that's where I was hunting was not a good spot. Now that I actually know how to use a machine a couple years in, I'm having really good luck with this, uh, picking things out. And you want to talk about depth, I know I've gotten things at 14 inches with this machine, nails and things before. But just to show you guys, was getting a nice full signal here, and it was a piece of tin foil, you know, and that's down there six, seven inches. And that was just sounding off just like a coin, and that's not very big, guys. So anybody who wants to tell you that the Bounty Hunter Land Ranger Pro is a garbage machine, they just don't know how to use it. It is an excellent value machine. So I'm going to stick by my assessment and my recommendation of the Bounty Hunter for especially new guys that are just starting, and you don't have a thousand bucks to spend on a machine or don't know if you're going to do the hobby long enough. You can get this machine now for like 350 bucks on Amazon. That's Canadian. So for that price, guys, it is a full featured, and I have no, I mean, I have no tie-in. I don't care what you guys use. I'm just giving you my honest opinion from a guy who spent hundreds of hours with that machine, hundreds with the AT Pro, and now probably a couple hundred this summer with the Cruiser. Um, this machine will hang with the best of them. Ha uh ha, -huh. that shit-eating grin on my face should say it all. The Bounty Hunter Land Ranger Pro is adamant that there was a nickel here. And I know it shows it shows American coins and not Canadian, but it was adamant. 33, 34, 5 cents, 5 cents. And I thought, eh, I'm not going to skip this piece of foil. I'm going to dig it. Guess what it was? It's a nickel. I haven't looked at it yet. Could be an old one. Let's find out. There it is, guys. The machine said it was there. Yeah, down about six and a half, seven inches.
Alright guys, are you ready for this? Look what the bounty hunter found me. I ran, I ran the pinpointer over here. Couldn't see it. And then I looked. Look at what do you see right there guys. That looks like gold. Oh, there's a stone. There's a stone. <laughs> Look at that. Now, is it real? <laughs> Probably not. Let's see. Nope. <laughs> not real. Still cool. That is definitely a little kid's ring because it's teeny tiny. And it's something we missed with the other machines. So, good on you, bounty hunter. Johnny's yelling, oh wow. Victoria, okay, now we're talking. Oh, fish scale. I think it's 1874. Not that I don't trust your eyes, John, but I'll take a closer look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that, yeah, okay. Eighteen seventy four, buddy, good job. Yeah, my, old, oh. <laughs> my oldest fishy. His oldest fishy yet. Nice job. Okay, and it's time for a keeping it real moment. Can't be all praise. I'm loving using the bounty hunter today. It's finding all the little bits and pieces. Because I'm digging everything, that's great. It's fantastic today. The problem is all those nails that I'm finding and the tin foil are ringing up into good coin signals. So if you were in a fresh new field, it would be annoying to try to I mean if you're just looking for everything you're gonna dig everything this will find it but the ID is not on par with like say the cruiser no machine is perfect guys none of the three I own are perfect they all have their little quirks and you just have to learn your machine that is the best thing you can do is just put hours on it and learn the machine look at me guys it is absolutely freezing wet and muddy out here today this is the kind of day that requires full dedication from the digger because it is not comfortable. But I am not leaving till I get a silver. Hey, Johnny's on board with the ring. <laughs> Yours is a little flatter than mine. I think she's aluminum. Probably worth about the same though. Mine had a stone, mine's better. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, crappy one. Does it say anything on it? I don't think so. Okay, just one more example, guys. A nail head. Seven inches. So anybody who wants to tell you the bounty hunter is garbage, just come watch my channel, because I'm not feeding you a line. So any machine that can do that, hey, nothing wrong with that, guys. I'll take that all day long. Cold, windy day, but that's good for John. <laughs> Five bucks just blew by him when he was digging over there. <laughs> Coffee's on you, buddy. <laughs> so we are going to head to the bottle dump. So we're just going to show you quickly. I've got a bag full of tin foil. That's pretty much what I've been digging all day. There's probably oh, 130 holes worth right there. Okay, guys, there's the coin wrap up today. So uh, $3 and change and only one nice silver, but it is a nice one. The 1874 fish scale. And we are going to head out to the bottle dump now just to give our tendonitis elbow a break. So we're out at the uh, the site where we're not sure the bottle dump is either in here or right in here. And then if we go up, there's a huge maple hill here that uh, my mother and father-in-law, and, and when they were kids 60-some years, years ago, they used to sleigh ride down here. And there's a big ravine and a creek at the bottom, and they said there's another bottle dump halfway up. So that's got to be pretty old. Okay, so here's the first uh, bottle site, guys. What do you got there, John? I have no idea. I don't know anything about bottles or ages of bottles, but we'll take a look here before you get through here for you guys. And I don't know. Another one. Some old BP stuff. Leg hold? Like a wheel pulley thingy. Oh, I thought it was a trap. 
That is cool. There's a. Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know the age of these bottles. What do you What do you figure? Sixties. Yeah, this isn't that old, but. The height of fashion from 1944. That's pretty solid. You know what I'm, I mean? They made something, man. It's been sitting out here in the bush for 40 years. They made it to last. <laughs> okay, so is this uh, an indicator for this pile of junk? I don't know. 1963. There you go, the old click can. Big old cauldron over here. <laughs> okay, is that cool or am I just crazy? I don't know. I mean, that looks like a syrup bottle, but... It's intact. Worth keeping? Yay, nay? I have no idea. But it's intact, so I'm going to put it off to the side. You guys let me know. We're, we're going to leave this here, and uh, if it's worth coming back for, let me know. I'll come back for it. Here's a Crown Mason. That one is probably worth keeping. I think these are ketchup bottles here. There's a couple of them intact. You taking the lid off the one and putting it on the other one? Good call, buddy. Now you got a full set. <laughs> Is that an old coffee jar? It's intact, so we'll put it in the pile over here. We're starting a little pile. My brother-in-law told me about this dump, and he used to come here when he was a kid and he wanted to target practice, he'd pull bottles out of here and shoot them, so how many did he wreck? I don't know. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Is that not absolutely amazing? John says it's an arboretum. Whatever that means. Got a little planet growing inside this jar here. Cool. Old set of headlamps here. General Electric. Wonder what those are off of. That's pretty cool too. Here's one that looks intact. Pinex trademark. Here's a cool little mini bottle. White hull. Some numbers on the bottom, fully intact, that's cool. And then there's another white one here I found. I don't know, no writing or anything on it. It's intact. Getting a good little collection of intact ones anyway. Here we got the $1.50 dandruff remover. <laughs> nice. We'll start the bidding at $1.50. They got another Buckley's. Ah, oh, dude, you're supposed to drink that. You're wasting the good Buckley's. Ooh, another Buckley's. Talc. So that's like a powder, right? Like talcum powder? Baby powder. And here's another little small bottle. But look at the cool embossing on that. No idea what that would have been. D.B. Gordon. Don't know what that is, but we're going to have a lot to research tonight anyway. There we go. Two Vix bottles. <laughs> What's better than one Vix bottle? Two Vix bottles. I was just telling John, this is really cool. We're finding cool stuff, but I don't know what to get excited about and what not to be excited about. So, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Rapture. Ooh. Perfumed talc. <laughs> Put some of that in your boots, John. Is that uh, called milk glass? There's nothing on it, and the lid is rotted away. And whatever was in here is still in here. <laughs> I don't know what it is, and I'm not about to taste or smell it. Okay, I just pulled this one out of here. 1962, so I guess that's the era we're dealing with. <laughs> So this one here, I don't know if that's a cologne or something. It says Woodbury on the bottom of it. 
intact. It was in the one of our, we got a couple of piles of intact stuff now. Okay, so I don't know if this is an old Listerine or I don't know what it is, but uh, there's a date on here, 1959, right there. Got some Rexall quick bands. Feels like it's empty. Yeah, it's empty. There we go, look at that. There's an old skate blade. Oh, these guys sure like their Buckley's because there's Buckley's number four. Copper. Don't tell me in the 60s that they had a can opener that made throwing stars out of the lids from your old soup cans. That's friggin' awesome. Try it out, buddy. No wonder they didn't keep that design. Didn't work. He's not the most gentle bottle digger I've ever seen. Let's let's give him that. Have you found any that weren't broken today, John? Oh yeah, I don't. <laughs> For freak's sake, man! Slow and steady. Another one to How come I can't find any bottles that aren't broken? <laughs> okay, there we go. There's the first intact Pepsi with a nice label. Uh, it's got to be worth something. I don't know anything about bottles, but I'm, I'm still guessing that that's got to be worth something. Look at that, guys. Now there is an old toy. John just did his happy dance for me, so he he must know something that I don't. We're missing a front axle, but hey, you got two rear tires there, buddy. That's heavy. That's that's solid. Yeah. Nice, nice find, I guess. <laughs> that is all it is. Don't get much better than that. So I was just cleaning this toy for John here, and I realized, look at that. There's a gear in there. And uh, there's some teeth right here on this gear, and it's got a winder on it. That was a wind-up toy. Really cool. Terrarium. That's what I'd call that. That's so freaking cool, man. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. It's own little greenhouse. Yeah. How the heck did something grow through the inside? Like, look at The lid is solid on there. Where there's a will, there's a way, I guess. Look at that. Okay, we solved the mystery. This was a coin jar. There's a slot in there. And just through that little slot, we've got the whole terrarium growing in here. Oh, the dirty buggers. Throwing batteries away like that. Ever ready energizer. All right, guys. There is the uh, good pile. Anyway, found quite a few plates there. 62, 63. We got four of them. Some syrup bottles, seven Buckleys, three Vicks, the really cool old car, the Rapture, can't forget the Rapture, uh, some more whiskey bottles over here, the Mason, uh, that's a good one to keep, uh, Cologne I think, an old skate, the Pepsi, the Pepsi's a good one, the Terrarium. Alright guys, that's it for this adventure, we are worn out and uh, dug enough bottles to last uh, for a while. So that's it. Thanks for joining us. We'll catch you guys in the next video.